Okay, so first, how did you get into extreme metal? And first, in the beginning? Uh, it's like all of us, I mean, gradually. Mm. I mean, I, I started out with Twisted Sister mm. when I was like 10. And then, you know, gradually I made Judas Priest. Yes. And, you know, with Metallica, more of a thrash thing. Mm. And then, it's it just through friends, you know, singing it, you know, Introduced to more extreme and forms of music, you know, Slayer, and then, you know, also well, more the angel, you know, Alters of Madness, yes. and uh, to on that time pass. And uh, alongside that, you know, came also, you know, Blastery, Celtic Frost. It just, you know, gradually, and I think me and Sam also, we, uh, when I started playing with him in the first place, uh, the first band we had, I played with him in was more of a heavy metal band. And then that band quit, and he was part of the trash band. But then he started, uh, you know, more death metal inspired band, and I joined that. Mm -hmm. So we, we all along kind of played similar extreme music to what we were listening to. Mm -hmm. So you just you know how it is when you're a teenager, you're your early teens, you know, time is very slow. So by the time uh, we started, you know, with heavy metal band when I was 13, mm -hmm. that was 16, we, you know, from that. Well, you were 16 when you started. Emperor. Yeah, when, when we signed the Gunlight. Oh, we were 16? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so about Black Metal, how did you find about Black Metal? Did you often go to help it? No, that was, that was afterwards. That mm -hmm. was afterwards, but I think so, so I was introduced with it, you know, Black Metal for me when, when I heard uh, Goldfire Death of Mazarin. Oh, yes, it was 88? Yeah, but I, I heard it la later on. Oh, you know, in, in, in you know, probably you know, late uh, yeah, nine, 1990 or something. Mm. Yes. Yeah, in the, in the early 90s, the the death metal and grindcore was the, the, the biggest yes. you know, movement in extreme metal scene. And all of a sudden, black metal um, rose in Norway. Mm. So, was that? It was. Uh, yeah, personally, I started feeling like death metal was something wrong. You know, I, I missed the, the evil feeling of such metal of the 80s. Yes, yes. So then I started uh, having a contact with Ronus and I found out that uh, there are so many bands uh, in Norway who are playing uh, black metal, which, which had a roots in the 80s. Such metal. So I said, how, how was the movement? Uh, you see that. that as, uh, as you know, probably since Fenner say as well, mm -hmm. in the beginning it was very few people. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, it was, but still, all of us were in, in touch. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the death metal scene, you know, we, 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 we in some of the death metal suffer, mm -hmm. with embryonic, yes. and then the death metal suffer with death metal, yeah. and death metal bands. And the death metal suffer even had, you know, keyboards. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it was kind of, that was, in the beginning, that was kind of the main priority. And then it comes to Samus who wanted to, uh, to also do this move back to the basic kind of black metal, mm -hmm. you know, Hellhammer, mm -hmm. that's what it's a the project. And I, you know, became part of that. And uh, then we did that very necro sounding Ross the entire demo. Mm -hmm. and, and after that, you know, that became the, the main priority. And then we kind of got in the keyboard skin that we were using that was so, so then we kind of just gathered everything into, into that. But I think that was kind of symptomatic for the whole scene. And and uh, I guess, you know, it, it was just friends. And we, I mean, we, we were in touch. We, we already played shows in, in Iverson, where the enslaved guys were mm -hmm. from. So, because we were tape, tape trading. Oh, we yes. were in the rest of the world, but also, even in 89, mm -hmm. we had a show with My Town, not on, uh, called the Graveyard King. Mm -hmm. And we had the Finnish band there, with two Swedish bands, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Old Funeral played there. Oh, yeah. And uh, the, and we played there with Embryonic and and I think Kadaver played there as well. Kadaver? Yeah. Yes, yes, Kadaver. And and I remember we went to see Dark Tron and Kadaver in Oslo mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, uh, that was before Dark Tron also, you know, when they went from death metal yes. to it. So so it, it's kind of hard to say where the switch was, but it's, uh, you know, of course, the place in the northern sky. You know, mm -hmm. it, that kind of changed things as well. But it's kind of, it's, uh, it, the 
the mentality had changed, and probably as I say, as a reaction to this point of Florida movement. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you're from Norway, or I guess in Japan as well, I mean, Florida and the kind of sunny thing, it, as I say, it, it lacks that depth. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we talked about this yesterday as well, that uh, death metal, you know, with no disrespect, but it's as a form of music, it's just kind of one-dimensional, very aggressive. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but um, yeah, I'm sure we agree that black metal, at least how we know it now, has more emotional depth. It can be both melancholic and sad, and I think you know, first-person records, you know, you can hear that kind of that longing and that more epic yes. feel. It's not just pure aggression, mm -hmm. so it's much more atmospheric. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, that is something that we were drawn to, mm -hmm. probably as a growing up with uh, with the uh, 80s metal, yes. which had a kind of larger than fire yes. perspective, right. and you know, very theatrical. Mm -hmm. And I think you know the 90s in in themselves, like the reaction to that kind of fun boy in the 80s thing. Mm -hmm. You had the grunge movement and everything that was very so down to earth and yes. kind of hippie-ish again, and I think uh, many of us have you know that that reaction to it and we want to do something more epic. So from what what I read and from what I heard, Ronald Moss was trying to educate that normal kids and, and uh, turn them into black metal manics. Is it true or is it just? You know, I guess he, he had kind of a positive you know influence on the scene because he had a shop and. Mm -hmm. The rest of the world were we were teenagers, mm -hmm. of course, and he was like 25. Oh, yes. And he, you know, so he was older, and he already had this relationship to Venom, mm -hmm. you know, that you know, like, and all the uh, bulldogs or <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, so I think he he uh, kind of introduced many of these kind of more extreme bands that mm -hmm. we never really heard about, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to to the people who, who visited his shop, but obviously. He also had, you know, the kind of dark atmosphere, you know, mm -hmm. the candles and you know, like, and he had the, you know, the bullet bells and everything from the eighties. Yes. Yes. So, so the whole imagery there, I think, you know, absolutely involved. Of course, we, we went to uh, to to death metal shows as well, and that was we were actually, you know, sleep in the cellar at the shop, mm -hmm. and we came to Oslo instead of, you know, we can go, go to hotels. Mm -hmm. So we all went, you know, there. And, People were drinking and yeah, saying there, yeah, and yeah, and, uh, and then you know going to to see. We I remember went to see more the Angel D side, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, so so it wasn't that divided at that point, mm -hmm. but uh, it kind of grew from that. Mm -hmm. How was the shop actually? Did, did you do they did, did they have a lot of CDs and LPs? Yeah, yeah, very much vinyl as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so um, I guess. It was still early days for, for CD. Mm. <laughs> Did you buy anything at Hell with it? Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh. yes. Yeah, but e even uh, uh, I think I bought this kind of progressive, trashy, you know, uh, Nocturnus. Oh, Nocturnus. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so he was selling uh, everything, you know, extreme metal. Mm. Mm. So did, did you, did, did he like move the engine over side? Oh yeah, oh, I think so, so. yeah. So they, they, uh, they made fun of that, like, when I think one time the police, Came to the shop mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, you know they opened the door and there was like you know first knee side album, album with Satan just popping. Can't go to you all. Who why did the police come to the shop? Is it after in Arizona? No no no. It was before, before that. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. really probably no idea. I, I wasn't there at the time. I was just told. Mm -hmm. It was just very coincidental that they came in and like. Sacrifice for the special <laughs> suicide or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, what did you think about the, those crimes in the inner circle? I, I know you were, you know, not, you were not a part of that. Activities, uh, you know, no, and um, uh, I think I, I was kind of part of the scene. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I was always kind of a sidekick to someone. He had all the connections. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I went to Oslo, it was with him. Mm -hmm. And he was the one who had been with tape trading and... Oh yeah, I was going to say trading with him too. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I tried to do the letter thing, mm -hmm. but you know, it's just like me and emails these days, it just doesn't work. <laughs> I'm very bad like that, so he always had kind of the, the, the connections. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just tagged along. Mm -hmm. 
So, so uh, it was through him that I got to know the mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, for some reason, I, I guess I was very much by luck as well that I, I did get involved mm -hmm. in anything. Because we were, of course, as teenagers, very consumed by all this kind of craziness. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we really lived and created this. Mm -hmm. So with this useful conviction and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I get a letter from a bar and some of yeah. the saints they burned down the church. But I was not sure if it was true or not because there is no internet or anything. So there is no way to <laughs> you know, just confirm if they're talking the real things. Or yes. Not. So yeah, it was something totally, you know, different. Yes, yes, absolutely. So crazy. But, but I think we were, we were so consumed in, in the atmosphere. And obviously, with the kind of hatred we were, you know, all, all, even before all this happened, you know, the, when you dressed like that, you were, at first you were ridiculed. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like Gandhi says, you know, first they ridicule you, you then they ignore you, and then they hate you, and then you win. <laughs> so, so uh, it's, uh, it's a typical reaction to, I guess, the, the whole outsider mm -hmm. type of movement. You know that you you are ridiculed until the point that you're actually a danger. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a, and uh, I think it's psychologically it's probably about you know taking that power back. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I, but the, my reaction to it was that you know I I was just as kind of excited by this the intensity of yeah. it all. And I was excited, excited too. Yes. Too, so so we, we didn't think about, you know, seeing consequences or anything like mm -hmm. that because it was just very, very exciting and it kind of just fit into the whole picture. Yes. Yeah.